Ready to rock. All right, guys. Exchange. This is uh, number 15. It's, it's amazing how fast we're going, getting through these. Yeah. So let's go. Q&A today, guys. So today's topics really have to do with cost of business ownership, in essence. Okay. First question from Simon. I just tipped a programmer $500 when his fee was 50. Why? Because he solved a massive problem that nine previous hires couldn't solve, and he quoted me $50 for the job. He just unclogged a bottleneck in my online business that will result, result in nearly seven figure per month revenue. As Elon Musk said, you are paid in direct proportion to the difficulty of the problems you solve. So I decided the only fair thing to do would be to tip the guy and express my gratitude. Do you have a similar story? Or what can you speak to something about this? Or how can you speak to No, I, I agree concept? with him. I, uh, Simon, I totally agree with you. If if uh, nobody else can figure that out and you know your guy did and you know, he charged 50 bucks and the other nine couldn't figure it out, you give him additional f 500, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Uh, has that ever crossed me? I, I don't remember. I think it's a, it's a good way of doing business. Yeah. yeah. Me personally, no, I've never yeah. had that. But you opportunity think, but you, you agree with that kind of oh 100 percent i agree with the guy i would actually someone over delivers i would i would go and uh, reach out to the guy and see if he wants a job yeah that's what i would you know my mind's going that way not you know giving him another 500 bucks like how do i get this guy on my team mm -hmm. i think that's more important so for you it's not even so much the monetary compensation but it's it's maybe potential value obviously the money this the guy's money a smart come. guy yeah. if, if nine other people like i'm not sure where this guy was looking at was it fiber or was it like an actual yeah, know. It, you know it that's that's say. another thing right yeah that's another thing are you going to the pros or are you uh you know asking your next door neighbor's kid to do it mm -hmm. right and if you're asking the the nine next door neighbor's kids that have no idea what the hell they're doing, but just because they're uh, young and they think they know about tech versus somebody that you actually hire that knows about tech and get, can get it done, then I think that's that ninth person wasn't wasn't the person. But I think if you ask nine person that were uh, uh, you know professionals and this was their career and, and they couldn't figure out and this one person did, I think this guy's a great guy then. Oh, this person's a great person then. Moving on, next question from Terrence. Choose your mindset, A, how much can I sell it for? Or B, how much is it worth? How much is it worth? Value, if I go back to real estate, and let's just say you have a house in an area next to the school, next to a shopping mall, next to daycare, next to a park, it's got no value to me. But it's got a lot of value to a young family that has a child in daycare, has something that's going to school, has a park around the corner, it works for them. Value's not there. You find me a place in Cold Harbor where it's one bedroom or two bedrooms, you know, mm -hmm. upstairs from a, a hotel that I frequent in, <laughs> right? There's a tremendous amount of value there for me. So, no, mine, mine's a ladder. And I guess from that, you could also still figure out how much you could sell it for once you know it's worth. Yeah, you find a person where, you know, this is... This is whatever gonna be that worth, thing is, I'm yeah, sure well, yeah, whatever the thing is, yeah. right? You find the person that uh, uh, values this, and you know, you you approach them and pitch them. It's easier close for me to know how much it's worth. No, no, no how much it's worth, but like who who am adding value to? Mm. Who needs this product? Who needs the service more than anyone else? And then you uh, um, approach them, and at that point, I think sales is gonna be much higher. So if you, what you're saying is, if you understand your demographic or understand your client you can better understand how much something is worth or the value of a certain thing yes and you therefore can. you can price it then you can put it price it accordingly exactly so i'm just pulling numbers out of you out of thin air here no is that a common mistake like i, I don't know i can't speak to it like is that a no no look you know what i i think for new mm -hmm. i think for uh, new people just starting there they they just look at competitors and they want to um you know base everything around them but I think the ones that have been around for a long time, they, there's uh, there's always going to be some type of research that's done before they even uh, you know value their their product or their service. No, knowing the numbers backwards, right? What the expenses are, what yeah. uh, uh, what all the expenses are, how much profit you want to make, minus, you know taxes and everything else. And okay, this is what we think we should sell it for, mm -hmm. and go from there. And then look at your competitor's price. Oh, you know what? We're so much higher. Okay, then we need to adjust. Or if we're so much lower, okay, that's uh increase the increase the price yeah next question from simon 
What's the biggest cost you're paying personally to be an entrepreneur right now? Biggest cost personally? Well, let's just say the biggest cost you're paying to be an entrepreneur right now. Yeah, that can be anything. It can be from wages. It can be to like our research and development. It can be, um, or like forget monetary, right? It can be time, mm-hmm. time away from family, time away from friends, time away from vacation. You know that there's. A, I think that's more important to to a lot of people today mm-hmm. is the time away from uh, uh, from things, <laughs> from people that you uh, that you love. Uh, for me right now, I would say it's fifty fifty between expenses, as in. Um, the investments that I have, and also wages, I would say, is mm-hmm. is my is my two, is my two. In the mortgage business, we don't really have uh, big expenses, right? right? There's no uh, product or development. Development is more mentally um, than anything else. And the odd courses here and there, and some conferences that if you want to go to, but besides that, it's just it's for me. It's more the money going out. As in investments going out and uh, and wages as well. Okay. From Marshall, do you have separate accounts for personal and business funds? Yes, I do. Uh, I have a corporation, so I'm not sole proprietor. Mm-hmm. So you know, I have you know many different entities. My there's my personal, and there's different businesses, and every business has its separate uh, account. I I've been like that from day one. I'd never been a sole proprietor. I, when I got in, I knew I was going to get in, mm-hmm. and we get in. So for sole proprietors, what, do you, what would you say to them? Separate accounts. Separate? Yeah. Separate accounts. Even if they have, you know, you can go to your bank account and, and have the same bank account, but in that bank account, you can have, you know, checking and savings or two savings or, you know. Yeah, just whatever. You talk, talk to your banker or talk to your, uh, whoever it is, credit union or whatever, and just break it down to them. Like, you know, this is this is me, and this is my company. How do you think I, I should uh, put it together? And you know, not this is my this. I'm a sole proprietor, right? And this is my personal fund, and this is my company fund that mm-hmm. I'm, I'm making. Uh, how do you think I should? Uh, well, how do you think I should this, set this account up? I would do that. Right. So from that, you're saying any money you make would go into from whatever that's what i would do some people will say okay just and you dump would still it still pay yourself into the other account is what you're saying well or? some that's what i would do yeah. because I'm, I'm more visual and, mm. and others will look at it differently They're like okay you know what let's just throw everything into one account and we'll have a spreadsheet yeah you know this is what belongs to me personally this is what belongs to the company and if this belongs to the company uh you know how much of this are we going to reinvest into uh advertising into product development research and everything else mm-hmm. tax Taxing, taxation, and everything. But it, and I'm only talking for a sole proprietor. If it's a company, it's two different things. Yeah. This is talking to like, you know, companies. F- companies, about it. yeah, that's yeah. different. Yeah. Separate. Ent- remember, guys, company is a separate entity. It's like mm-hmm. it's another child. It's another person, mm-hmm. right? It has its own number. Has its own name. Has everything. Yeah. Do you ever? Is there ever a time mm-hmm. or reason for you to cross for you to? Having money going back and forth between the two or pulling between my out personal yeah. and no, the only time I take uh, look, there's a couple of times I had to take pr- like either my my company had to loan money to me personally or personally I had to loan money to the company. And at that time, that's just a loan agreement that goes back and forth. Mm-hmm. Look, you know, it's the shareholders. If it goes from uh, me personally to the company, it's a shareholder loan, mm-hmm. right? I'm giving my loan uh, my my company a loan. Mm-hmm. If it goes back the other way, then uh, you know the company's giving me a loan, mm-hmm. and there's an you know some type of agreement there that I have with the accountant that I write and I give it to them. This is what the money was for, and make sure it's paid back. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. But besides that, no, I uh, I keep everything separate until I get paid, and then when I get paid, obviously, then then it comes from the company to to me personally. I pay my taxes right. yeah, there, yeah. and, and oh, it just stays with me. I mean, outside of that, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, good to know. Um, from Panny. Was that a Dylan question? No, actually. But I saw <laughs> but did it you get something there? Huh? You, you got yeah, something there. Yeah, yeah, I did there. get something right. there. That's why I put <laughs> it in there. It wasn't my question, but, but, you wanted, but I you put wanted, it in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> next question from Penny. What's the, sm- what's the smallest amount of money you've ever taken someone to court for? Yeah, well, I've taken many people to court. Um, it's just my line of business that we're in. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say one of my tenants... Because this guy really pissed me off, really ticked me off, and he was just arrogant guy, and I, I and I wanted to teach a lesson. Um, I don't know. When was this? Was oh, this like first when you had your home? Or? Years and years ago. No, it was maybe three, four years after I got my house. Uh, I don't know, maybe fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. 
twelve hundred, something like that. Worth it? For time Out of principle? For for time, no, but I felt good. Yeah. So But yeah. I felt good. <laughs> Would you yeah. do that today? No. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Just, you know, cut my losses and, and walk away. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. There's two ways. <laughs> uh, you know, when you're when you're young, you want to do other things, right? But uh, yeah, yeah. we'll keep that quiet here, right? <laughs> um, so <clears throat> the, the next best way was, uh, you know, take them to court mm-hmm. and, and go from there. I won. And uh, we garnished wages and uh, we got most of it back. But, but no, over the year and a half, look, 1500 bucks a year yeah. and a half. How many times I have to go to the uh, to the to the court, sign documents, and and sit and line up there and wait? And it's just it wasn't even worth my time. So when do you, when do you, is do you think it's an age thing, like deciding on whether to do something uh, to prove a point or to make you feel better? Do you think the older you get, it's like fuck? I think for me that was more of a, like if I look back now, that's more of an ego thing. Right. Right. Like you yeah. know, there's no there's no way this this idiot is gonna get away with this. You know, yeah. that's that's my money. I'm going after it. But yeah. now we just gotta. Now I would look at that as like, is my time mm-hmm. worth fifteen hundred bucks? No, it's not. So I will walk away from that. And then other times it's, you know, do do you want to fight that battle? And if the answer is yes, if you want to fight that battle, then you go after them. If not, but even so, after that, you would still go back to, is this worth my time? Yeah. So it's like, do I want to fight? Even sure, today. but is it worth my time? Yeah. No. What what I do today? This is because we have to do it. We we have a charge on somebody's home, and if they don't pay, we we legally have to go after them. Mm-hmm. That this aside, me yeah, it, no. if this is me personally, or if this is like you know to to do with Cybuck in the future, or some other company like that in the future, where uh, you know security is not an uh, is not the the uh, what we have a loan against. So it's not, it's not a mortgage, but it's uh, um, you know service that was was done and we didn't get paid for it at that stage then i look at it, it's like you know is this 2500 bucks is it worth it yes yeah. no yeah it yeah. is okay let's go if not then yeah clean it move on move on and then you find out here's the good thing with this is you start realizing there's there's going to always be patterns right in the mortgage business there's always patterns we i know when somebody's going to pull out the deal at the last moment they have patterns right and once they start feeling that i'll back out mm. And you'll start realizing this stuff. Over time, you're getting ahead of the game, is yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Over time, you'll just know, and you'll kind of feel it. You'll know the the time wasting and the types of uh, uh, excuses that they have, and uh, and then you make your judgment based on that. Next question from Zola. Nope. <sighs> that's not the question. I was gonna the the other one here is does a baby formula and diapers business make money? But that's not what I was gonna ask you. Is that a question? <laughs> it is a question on here, but I, I don't think. Oh yeah, then okay. Yeah. But I think yes. I think anything makes a makes a good business. But you're let, let's answer that one. Okay. But you got heavy competition. Mm. Huggies and uh, I don't know what other brands are. These, these are brands, right? I think a lot of people don't even know the word diaper. They probably know go get the huggies. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I think there is a market when you go especially today and i'm not going to say in a lot of parts of the world but i know locally west coast vancouver san francisco seattle all these areas where organic is very important and uh, i was just gonna say right organic is very important naturally and then made naturally diverse. made and then uh how do you dispose of it like this stuff is very important right uh, get into the eco game a bit yeah and i think i think a lot of um i don't know these numbers but a good feeling that there's going to be a, a good percentage now that's not using disposables they're probably using some type of cloth i know you're giving that look but i think there is there i think that's there really yeah got a good feeling Maybe. that's there yeah because if i gotta go back like i talked to some of my aunts and and even uh, uh older generation they said they, they never used diapers on their kids i gotta actually talk to my mom what she used i was a good baby <laughs> The best the stuff. Toilet. He's the best stuff, man. I was born using the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question from Michael. Did you fund your own business out of pocket when you started it? Yes. Or did you, or did you use other people's money? I if, go. <laughs> Sorry, I just know the answer. <laughs> uh, so you said yes, I don't even need to. Yeah, in, in business, I never borrowed any money. I have. Uh, it's always out of pocket. It's out of, it was always out of my cash. I don't recommend anyone starting a business without their own money, right? If you can't afford it, just 
continue working for somebody else until you can make that money cut back on your expenses if you got to pick up another job pick up another job sleep less do whatever you got to uh um to start your business i hate debt i think you guys i told you guys that before i hate all sorts of debt including mortgages so there's no fucking point in taking out a loan just to start a company and and here's another one you know taking out a loan to invest People take out loans to put into the stock market or, or buy, you know, crypto and all. Like, that's that's some dangerous shit, man. Yeah. That's some really dangerous stuff. Wow. Yeah, that's that's all you can say about that. Wow. Next. <laughs> Last question from John. You got $100,000 right now. Where are you investing it? As of this moment, I have nowhere to invest it. I would probably put that into... Uh, I would invest that into a mortgage because that's the market I know as of right now. Not um, your own. What do you mean, not my own? If the money is into a mortgage. Yeah. Uh, sorry. So let me let me make this clear. I would be a lender, yeah. not. Uh, you lend the money. I would lend the money to somebody and take the house as security. Hence, um, you know, being the mortgage or. Uh, you would. I know you talk about buying companies and. You yeah. Put not ready right now. Yeah. Yeah. I would say in a year from now, I'll probably return another 10, 12, 14% on that 100,000. And then uh, and then probably a year from now or six months from now or eight months from now or something like that, then I'll, I'll look at it. But as of right now, no, I would I would deploy that into, if I had 100 grand right now, I would deploy that into a mortgage investment, a mortgage investment, mm-hmm. not, uh, not going buying, <clears throat> buying a, a debt. Good to know. That's all I got for you today. <clears throat> all right, guys. Till next time, keep uh, your questions, keep sending your questions in. Actually, I want to mention this. Anyone in the Vancouver area, if you want to be in the show, I would love to uh, talk to you. Uh, and if you're an entrepreneur, especially if you guys have a product, I would love that even more. Or a good story. Or a good story. Oh, great story is always great. Uh, but I'll, you know, I, I want to you know, have somebody come in here that has... Diapers. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, why not, man? Diapers, baby formula, or um, no product. Products, any, any kind of product, right? Not a T-shirt that says something on it. Like, you know, I don't think that's a product. That's just somebody's creativity side. I don't know. What, whatever. Okay. Whatever it is. You heard the man. Yes. <laughs> uh, send us a DM uh, on on any platform, Facebook, you know, Instagram, or um, comment on YouTube, and uh, we'll do our best to reach out to you. Until next time. <laughs>